Hello and welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about Kingdom Animalia. Now before we get started into this video, I would really, really advise you to watch our previous video on the classification of living things. That video talks about um, binomial nomenclature and general introduction to classification. Now the animal kingdom has eight phyla and they are Porifera, Coelentrata, Platyhelminth, Nematoda, Anelida, Mollusca, Arthropoda, Echinodemata, and Chordata. This phyla can be placed into two subphylas, which are invertebrates and vertebrates. Out of all the nine subphyla, only Chordata contains vertebrates. The remaining eight are all invertebrates. To remember all the nine phyla, use the mnemonic Pretty Cute Puppy Never Answers Master After Eating Cookie. So this will help you remember all the nine phylums that we have. So Pretty Cute Puppy Never Answers Master. The P can represent any of the P, so it doesn't have to be uh, arranged accordingly. The P can be either platyhelminth or porifera. So this simple mnemonic can help you remember the nine phylums. And if you cannot understand this one, if this one is not good for you, you can always make your own. So in this video, we're just going to go through the characteristics of every every phylum so we're just going to state characteristics and give examples porifera they are simple aquatic invertebrates they do not locomote that means they can move they can move but they cannot change their position from one place to another completely they have asymmetrical bodies that means their body their body has disproportionate arrangement of parts exhibiting no pattern. It means what you may find on one side might not be on the other side. They lack specialized tissues. Examples of animals in this group is the sponge. Coelentrata. The body is made up of two layers. They are mainly aquatic organisms. They are radially symmetrical. That means a basic body plan in which the organism can be divided into two similar halves by passing a plane at any angle along a central axis. It means from any point, if you, if you cut the organism, it will have two identical halves or two similar halves. They have soft jelly-like bodies. They have tentacles and stinging cells used for capturing their prey. They reproduce asexually by budding. Examples are jellyfish, hydra, and coral. Platyhelminths. They are multicellular flatworms. They are bilaterally symmetrical. That means a basic body plan in which the left and right sides of the organism can be divided into approximate mirror images of each other. It means what you find on one side, you will find on the other side. They do not have body cavity or lumen. Their body is made up of three layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. They are mainly parasites in man and other animals. Most flatworms are hermaphrodites and others reproduce sexually. Examples are tapeworm, liver fluke, blood fluke, planaria, nematoda. They have round and cylindrical bodies. They lack body cavity. They are bilaterally symmetrical. 
They can be parasites or free living. Their body is made up of three layers. Some are hermaphrodites while others reproduce sexually. Examples are roundworm, hookworm, guinea worm, threadworm, and filaria worm. Annelida. They have internal and external body segments. Their body is long and cylindrical. They have body cavity or coelom. Some are aquatic while others are terrestrial. The elementary canal has two openings. That means a mouth and an anus. Some annelids reproduce sexually and many others are hermaphrodites. Their bodies are made up of three thick layers. Examples are earthworms, leeches, and tube worms. Mollusca. They have soft, unsegmented bodies. They have tentacles on their heads. They possess muscular foot adapted for crawling or burrowing. Their body is covered by a soft tissue called a mantle. Take note of this mantle. Some have calcareous shells, example snails, while others like octopus and slug do not. Some are aquatic while others are terrestrial. Their eyes and tentacles are used for sensitivity. Examples are, as I said before, snail, squid, octopus. Phylum Arthropoda. This is the largest phylum in the animal kingdom. It is divided into the following classes. Crustacea, Insecta, Arachnida, and Myropoda. So I'm just going to give the general characteristics of all of them combined. Characteristics. They have segmented bodies. They have hard, rigid exoskeleton made of chitin. They have jointed appendages or legs. They exhibit molten or ecdysis. So if you're asked which, which phylum exhibits molten or ecdysis, you know to choose arthropoda. And what is this ecdysis? This is the ability of, uh, of some animals to shed their exoskeleton at intervals to permit growth. Some are aquatic while others are terrestrial. Examples of aquatic ones are crayfish and terrestrial are ants. Their bodies are divided into two or three segments such as head, thorax and abdomen. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical. They are triploblastic. That means they have three body layers. They have various means of respiration such as gills, trachea, and long book or body surface. Examples of the various classes are under insecta we have grasshopper, cockroach, housefly, butterfly. Arachnida we have spider, scorpion, mites, and ticks. So a, a simple characteristic to know insecta is that insecta, they usually have six legs. That is just a major difference between all of them. Insecta has, all insects in insecta have six legs. While arachnida might have more than six. So the rest of them have as many legs as possible but insecta has just six legs. Arachnida, example spider, scorpion, mites, and ticks. 
crustacean example crab crayfish shrimps prawn and lobsters so if you are asked which part of which class of arthropoda are found in water the answer will be crustaceans such as crabs crayfish shrimps prawns and lobsters and since they are found in water you know that they are the organ for respiration will be gills Mariapoda examples are centipedes and millipedes phylum echinodermata characteristics their bodies are radially symmetrical they have spiny skin they are mainly marine animals they are triploblastic animals that is they have three body layers they have neither head nor brain and their bodies are not segmented they have tube feet which is used for movement examples are starfish sea urchins sea cucumbers and bristle star chordata the chordata has a subphylum called vertebrata that means vertebrates the vertebrates are characterized by the presence of a backbone or a vertebral column they are divided into five that is Pisces amphibia reptilia aves and mammalia you can also call them fishes amphibians reptiles birds and mammals these classes of vertebrates differ in some ways but they have some common characteristics and that is just what this video is about we're just going to name we list common characteristics that you can found, find they possess an internal jointed skeleton they have bilaterally symmetrical bodies their body is divided into head trunk and tail they have two pairs of limbs four limbs and hind limbs they have well-developed central nervous system containing the spinal cord and the brain they have well-developed sense organs they have a closed blood system remember any part of this lesson that you do not understand any statement any word any phenomena any statement any sentence that you feel that you don't understand always feel free to ask your question they have efficient excretory organs such as kidneys they are triploblastic animals they possess skin which can be naked or have coverings of scales feathers or hairs so now that we are done talking about the general characteristics of codata let's talk about their specific characteristics Pisces they are aquatic animals their skin is covered by scales but few of them have no scales they have fins they are cold-blooded animals they have gills they have lateral line they reproduce sexually they have external fertilization they are oviparous animals that means they lay their eggs which develop to adult stage outside the body of the adult female they have two chambered hearts they show parental care for their young ones Pisces can be divided into two groups based on their skeletal system these are the bony fish and the cartilaginous fish the bony fish these are fishes or fish with bony skeleton example tilapia mackerel salmon cartilaginous fish they are fish whose bones are made up of cartilages example dogfish amphibia they are cold-blooded animals they have two pairs of limbs 
they have naked or moist and granular skin with no external scales. They carry out gaseous exchange by means of gills, lungs, skin and mouth. So they have four means of respiration or four organs for respiration. Reproduction is sexual while fertilization is external. The young ones, that means tadpoles, are herbivores while adults are carnivores. They have poisonous glands on their skin which are used for defense. They have three chambered hearts. They have sticky tongue which can be protruded or retracted easily and quickly. They exhibit dual life, that means they can live both in land and both on land and in water. They do not show parental care. Examples are toads, frogs and salamander. Reptilia. They are cold blooded. They have dry skin covered with scales. They have two pairs of limbs except snakes. Some are aquatic, such as crocodile and tortoise, or turtles, while others are terrestrial, like snakes and lizards. They have lungs, which are used for gaseous exchange. Reproduction is sexual, and fertilization is internal. They have an incompletely developed four-chambered heart. That means that you can still see they have four chambered hearts, but the important keyword there is that it is incompletely developed. They have oviparous mode of reproduction. That means the females lay fertilized eggs. That means fertilization is internal. They have homodent dentition. They do not show parental care. Examples are lizards, war gecko, Turtles, snake, crocodiles, chameleon. Aves. They are warm blooded animals. Their entire body is covered with feathers, except the hind legs, which are covered with scales. They have two pairs of limbs. They have wings, which are used for flight. All members of the ave family, no, not all birds, can fly, but they can still be called birds. They have beak, which is used for feeding. They have rigid and hollow bones. So remember this, rigid and hollow bones. So when you're asked which, which class of Kodata has rigid and hollow bones, you know to remember birds. They have four chambered hearts. Reproduction is sexual and fertilization is internal. They exhibit oviparous mode of reproduction, which is laying already fertilized eggs. They have lungs, which are used for gaseous exchange. They show parental care for young ones. Examples are pigeons, ducks, hawks, sparrows, ostrich, weaver birds, etc. Mammalia. They have viviparous mode of reproduction. That means they give birth to their young ones alive. They have a well developed brain. They have four chambered hearts. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical. They have external ears called pinnae. They have, they show parental care. Examples are man, whale, bats, monkey, goats, lion, and elephant. So the bat is classified under here because a bat can give birth to its young one alive. So I've come to so that is all you need to know about kingdom animalia. We have gone through all the phylums, which are nine. And we have talked about their characteristics and also talked about their subphylums and their classes. So always remember to know which one has a backbone and which ones do not.
which ones are found in water and which ones are not so just simple important tricks that will help you remember everything completely so if you found this video helpful consider liking and sharing thanks again for watching have a good day